What's going on, internet people? EDC Gear Guy here, and we have an interesting knife for you today. This is the Cold Steel Colossus. And as you can see right off the bat, this is not your average folding knife. This is something different, for sure. I'm going to apologize in advance for my disgusting, jacked up, sliced up, bruised, beaten hands. I know they're gross. I'm sorry. I really am. Let me know in the comments if you think I should be wearing gloves. If it's just too freaking distracting seeing these disgusting, beat up paws of mine. But anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry in advance. Okay, get over it. Let's move on. Uh, the Colossus made by Cold Steel. Cold Steel, I mean, this is only Cold Steel would make this. <laughs> just look at this thing, man. <laughs> that is a Cold Steel knife all the way. Uh, it is pretty big. Um, it's not huge and so big, like everybody else says in their reviews of this knife. It's big. It's a 10-inch knife, uh, but it's not huge. It's only a four and a quarter inch blade, four inches according to Cold Steel. But no, it's really actually four and a quarter inches uh, according to my measurements. And uh, I mean, it's neat. It is definitely something different. So the color of this is obviously you got your, your black Glossy blade. Cold Steel does a really good blade finish like that. Um, this, I guess, is a, a black and green sort of lunar surface sort of camo? All right, yeah, we're going to go with that. This knife is designed by Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace is a knife designer. He has his own website. Uh, I think it's like Mike Wallace Knife and Tools, something like that. But if you search that on Google, you'll find it. From what I can tell, he only makes fixed blades. So his collaborations, these folder, his folders are all going to be collaborations. I believe he did the Cold Steel Immortal as well. It's another super cool knife. Um, very different kind of knife. So the guy's obviously got some, uh, got a creative flair going on in his mind. So this knife is made by Cold Steel. It is made in Taiwan. If that bothers you, I get it. You know, you want American knives. Look, dude. Taiwan makes good freaking knives. You know, I don't give a shit what anybody says. Taiwan is not China. Yeah, I mean, they're of Chinese descent, the Taiwanese. I believe they speak Chinese, their own sort of version of it. Um, they're basically Chinese people who have grown in leaps and bounds through democratic freedom. <laughs> you know, Taiwan is, is more along the lines of like South Korea or Japan as far as their their innovation, their technology, their society. So don't when you hear when you hear Taiwan, don't think it's China. Don't be like, oh communist. Nah. No, no. Taiwan makes awesome freaking knives. I don't care what anybody says. So in my mind, that's a good thing that it's made in Taiwan. Good thing. The dimensions of this thing, the blade height, meaning the from you know here to here. Uh, 4.7 centimeters for everybody else that's not American. For us Americans, that's 1.85 inches. Blade length is 11 centimeters or 4 inches. This is the specs on you know, the cold steel specs. In reality, it's 4 and a quarter inches in my measurement, but close enough. Cutting edge length, 9.8 centimeters or 3.86 inches. That seemed pretty dead on when I checked it. The sharpening angle from the factory is 18 degrees. So it's a pretty standard sharpening angle for a, a full flat grind for a sharp ass knife. So that's what I sharpen it at. Blade thickness, three millimeters. So not very thick, not very thin, but pretty thin for a big ass knife like this. Uh, but with the full flat grind, with this long or this tall blade and this blade shape, that's going to aid in its extremely slicey, sliceability. Uh, the close length of this knife, and you can close this with one hand. You put your hand up here on this, you know, front choil, let it drop a little bit. And, whoa, wait a minute. I let the, let it, let it engage in, you know, boop, shuts no problem. So your close length uh, is going to be 15.8 centimeters. And for us, uh, Freedom Humans in America, that's 6.22 inches. Total length, let me see if I can snap this on camera. Nope, I gotta do it off to the side. You can wrist flick it, you just need a lot of room. I don't wanna like start knocking shit over, wrist flicking it in front of the camera. 
Um, total length, open, it's 25.5 centimeters, a.k.a. 10 inches. The weight of this bad boy, surprisingly, it's only 190 grams, and that would be 6.72 ounces. Um, when I rated, I got 6.65, so close enough. Pretty light for a, a, a big, you know, a big knife like this. But what you find out is it's not really that big. It's pretty thin. The blade stock is not super thin, but pretty thin. Um, the handle's pretty thin. And we'll go over why that is. Uh, and like I said, G10 handle. Uh, but if you look at this handle, you can't, uh, see that shine to it? That's not from my greasy paws. That shine is some kind of like sealer that they put on the G10. When I first got this, I said, I was saying to myself, is this thing plastic? No, it's G10. It just has a, a slick sort of coating on it, which they probably shouldn't have done. But you know what? They put so much amazing texture into this thing that you get away with it. You still get a good, good grip on this thing, no problem. But I really wish they would have left that. You know, that kind of like flat, flat G10 thing that G10 had, most G10 has anyway. Uh, and I call this lunar surface. That's my own, that's my own description of it because it looks like the surface of the moon except that it's green and black. This does have the legendary triad locking mechanism. For those of you who don't know, I would take this apart for you and show you, but just listen. Snap. Snappity snap. Yeah, that's the noise of uh, that's the noise of safety right there for your hands and fingers. The triad locking mechanism essentially uh, is was created by Andrew Demko, the famed knife designer Andrew Demko. And it is still to this day, in my opinion, I know they say the the Atlas lock can hold more weight. Yeah, but it's overall the triad lock is the strongest, safest folding knife locking mechanism you can get of any knife, period. I don't care what you say it is. It's the best, in my opinion. You know, a regular lock back is pretty secure, but this is, go look it up. Look up the triad lock. You can watch a video or see pictures of it on Google. It explains. And once you see it, you'll go, oh, I get it. And you'll understand why the triad locking mechanism freaking rocks. Now, the type of steel this thing has, this is, this American steel, CTS XHP Carpenter Steel, made in America. Um, good steel, good steel. Uh, it's not considered super premium, but it is considered a high, higher end premium steel. Not like super high end, but just premium steel. Uh, they did make this knife, which this thing is discontinued, by the way. So you're going to have a hell of a time finding one of these, but you can still find them on the secondary market. They did make this knife in S35VN as well. And this, that S35VN version is, the, is a grail knife, a holy grail knife for me. I am currently on the hunt to get one. But this one's XHP. XHP is kind of like, you know, I do a lot of knife sharpening. And I would say when I sharpen XHP, it kind of sharpens like D2. It has that same sort of feel to it. Uh, gets the same kind of edge that D2 gets, you can give it a toothy edge, you can give it a mirror edge, it cuts both, cuts well with both. Um, although XHP is gonna be a lot more corrosion resistant, or at least somewhat more corrosion resistant than D2. So yeah, XHP steel, I'll take it. It's, it's made in America, that's good enough for me. Uh, the finish is Cold Steel's very durable, um, DLC, which stands for diamond light coating finish. I believe it's a, uh, a vapor finish where they basically hang all the blades up in a room and they, um, you can see how shiny it is. They, and, and, you know, they, they fill the air with the stuff and it settles on the blade and this is what you get. There is other DLC coatings. Let me see what I got here. Um, for instance, this is a cold steel, cold steel five max. Also a DLC coating, but a stonewash DLC coating. I do prefer the stonewash just because this thing, man, you just this, this fingerprint central. You get so many fingerprints on this thing. Uh, you're constantly wiping it off to make it look shiny and nice. 
Yeah, it's when you don't really worry about that shit too much. Cool knife, huh? Uh, yeah, stay tuned for the uh, 5 Max review coming up soon. So you got your DLC coating. It needs a lot of fingerprints, but man, this coating, you can... I, it's, it takes the it takes more of a beating than any other coating I've ever seen, ever, on any other brand of knife. Even when they call their coating DLC, it's nothing like Cold Steel's. I mean, it's very slick. You see how shiny it is. It's very slick, so it's going to help as far as slipping right through material when you're doing cuts. Um, pretty cool. If you're going to get a black blade, I do prefer just a steel blade. You know, a, a steel blade with uh, preferably with a stone wash. I'll take it with, you know, a, a, a mirror polish or a, a, a satin polish. But this is what I like. This is the Formax. Um, also, uh, stay tuned for this review as well. Thank you very much. But this is my favorite kind of finish that they do. And Cold Steel does it best. But I'll take this. Black DLC coating. It does look cool. I got to give it that. And it, it, it holds on really well. So if you're not chopping down trees with this thing, you'd probably stay good for a while. Oh, moving on, uh, this is a right or left-handed reversible pocket clip. Another cool thing is it's a single clip. Uh, a lot of cold steels, they use a, a, a proprietary clip that is specific for that side of the knife. So they have an extra clip. They come right hand, ready to go right-handed, but then they'll have the left-handed clip in the box. Uh, I don't mind it too much because I keep my boxes and I, I keep them arranged up, you know, stored up well, and I can always dig it out and find the other clip if I want to switch it left-handed, but not really the case when you're buying these things on the secondary market. A lot of times you're just going to get stuck with one clip and it's sort of a pain in the ass to find yourself a left-handed clip, but it can be done. No worries about that with this. As you can see, this clip is loved. Uh, <laughs> definitely missing some coating, but this clip will work just as fine on either side of the knife. So if you're cursed by God to be a left-handed person, you're okay. You could switch the clip out and carry it in your left pocket. I do actually carry a lot of knives in my left pocket. For instance, my EDC knife right now is Cold Steel Talwar. And as you can see, left-handed pocket clip. Because I carry my EDC blades in my left pocket. I carry my Marshall blade, my self-defense blade, which happens to be Cold steel also, the holdout. Ooh, look at that thing. That is nasty. This is my right pocket. You should be carrying at least two knives if you're going to be serious about being a knife person. One for self-defense, one for EDC tasks, like cutting apples and food and packages and all that kind of crap. Um, but I also, you know, I recommend you carry three knives. You should always carry one of those small, little small folding utility knives, too, for opening packages. Because then you don't get that gunk from the tape on the packages all over your knife blade. And you're not wasting your good knife blades on, on menial tasks like opening packages, which I do constantly every day. So, yeah, uh, you're going to get, I mean, that's kind of a lot. It's going to stick out of your pocket this far, which I like. I, a lot of people, God, I hear the piss in the moan. But I don't want people to know I'm carrying a knife. Everybody's gonna know I have a knife. So what? Who gives a shit? It's a freaking knife. It's not an Uzi hanging out of your pocket. Who cares? If somebody literally is that much of a puss that they're gonna cry and clutch their pearls because you have a knife in your pocket, dude, that's pretty weak. Just saying. Um, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people don't like it. I like it. I like having something to grab, especially because this is designed with a waveable thumb plate. So what happens is if a knife is waveable, how this works, most of you probably understand it, but when you pull this from your pocket, you have this much showing, you have a grip, you can get it. When you pull this from your pocket, it catches the corner of your pocket and opens the knife. So all in one shot, bat, knife comes out open from your, from your pocket. One step. And I tell you, I prefer all of my knives to be, which is why when you saw my self-defense knife, it has a snaggle tooth on it, which does the same thing. Um, which is why when you saw my five max, it has a snaggle tooth on it, 
it does the same thing. So yeah, this, you don't have to buy a special piece. It actually comes with a thumb plate and it works really well. Some knives, the, 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 the wave feature is called pocket wave. For those of you who don't know, some knives it works good on some, it, eh, not so much. Uh, depends on the knife, but, uh, this knife waves really well from all my pockets, my, my basketball shorts to my big hefty cargo pants. It works great. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can also use it as, you know, thumb open, classic thumb roll opening. Um, I, I can't do this on front of the camera cause I don't have enough room, but if you just give it a wrist flick, it will pop open. Not the case when I got this thing. Holy shit, this thing was crunchy. When you opened it, it was like... <laughs> so I had to take it apart. And it had those... Um, cold steel knives come with a, uh, a phosphor bronze washer. And then they put a Teflon washer on top of that against the blade. Which, I mean, when it has a tiny tad bit of oil on it, and it's not too old, it works really well. It makes it real smooth. A lot smoother than most other washer-based systems but if it's if it gets really dried out or it gets any gunk in there and it's dry it gets really crunchy so i actually remove them and i put polished phosphor bronze washers in this thing and it's pretty smooth now pretty smooth uh so you got your thumb stud uh which is great um blade shape and again you have a lot of a lot of real estate here to grab the pull out of your pocket probably a good thing uh, once you get used to, once you get past people worrying about what other people think, you start to realize that you, you want, you want that. You want that. Um, the blade shape is technically, technically a drop point. But as you can see, it is a big fat leaf shaped drop point, um, which is going to aid in incredible slicing ability, which I keep saying, but it, I just can't emphasize enough how good this thing cuts. Um, it does have a, it's not a blunt tip, so it's not going to be a world-class piercing blade. But uh, if you have any kind of man strength, you're going to be able to stab just fine with this. And can you imagine, as a just imagine the grievous wounds this thing would create if you stabbed it. I mean, it's like almost a two-inch, <laughs> it's almost a two-inch gash. Imagine getting this thing halfway in and then give it the old twist and pulling it out. Oh my god, this thing would would create serious bleeders. Um, but anyway, uh, the purpose of this design, uh, oh, by the way, this is, pocket clip also is tip up, the way God intended for knives to be. Not a big fan of tip down, it just, it's okay. If it's a, if it's a, um, an EDC knife, okay. If you're not worried about bringing it out fast and, and, and flipping it open fast, but tip up, I prefer, this is tip up. There is no option for tip down, no holes here. So that, that's what you get, and it's the way it should be, so that's fine. The purpose of this design, what was this designed for? Uh, I, I've watched every single Colossus review video on YouTube, and everybody kind of has different views. They don't really know. No one knows what it was designed for. Was it an EDC knife? Is it a Marshall blade? What, what's it for? It is indeed a Marshall blade. And that's coming straight from Lynn Thompson's mouth. In one of his million interviews, I happened to catch him talk about the Colossus for a brief 20 seconds. And um, you get a lot of guys out there that don't like these big knives. Uh, they won't carry them for some stupid ass reason. And you might be one of those guys. Um, you need to get over that because carrying big knives is awesome. And if you pull out your little three inch blade and I pull this out and we go to have a knife fight, you're going to lose. Even if you're trained and I'm not because yeah, I can grab it here and have a full hand on this knife. And you know, uh, you have no shot of getting close to me. Sorry. No, you should learn, especially if you're not a trained knife fighter, you need to start learning to carry a big blade. Oh, ADC gear guy. What are you running around getting in knife fights? No, but I carry a gun too. Maybe you carry a gun. Will you get you run around getting in gunfights? No, but you never know. What if you're, you know, there was a, a, a Walmart near my house where a guy was in line to check out with his sister and he had grabbed his sister's gun out of the glove box before they came in the store and she didn't know. And he was crazy. Turns out he was a schizophrenic and he was off his meds and he just decided 
uh, that he was going to start shooting people in the legs. This is, you know, 50, 20 minutes from my house. Uh, yeah. And he started shooting people in the legs, trying not to kill people, but to just grievously wound people for some reason. Now, if, if I was in line, uh, if you're in line and you're, you know, have any kind of morality and you don't want to see people get shot, you're going to pull your gun out and shoot this guy. But if you're in line and there's people in front of him and people in front of you, you can't just pull your gun out and start blasting. You're going to hit innocent bystanders. That's one of those moments when he is, when someone like that has their back turned to you and you get this out and you grab the gun with one hand and you stop the bad guy with the other hand. You should always have a knife on you. Um, maybe there's a place you can't go with a gun. Maybe you can't go. Maybe some, you shouldn't even patronize places that don't let you carry your gun in there, but maybe you can't. Maybe all you can carry is a blade, whatever. Maybe you don't have a, a, a pistol permit. Maybe you can't get one in your state. It's too much of a pain in the ass. Well, then you should have what you can carry, and that is a big blade. Okay, rant complete. Um, Lynn Thompson designed this knife, and this is what he said for those people that are like, it's too big, I can't fit it in my skinny jeans. It's too big for my skinny jeans. If it's too big for your skinny jeans. This will probably fit in your little skinny jeans. So you can look cute when you prance around your skinny jeans and still have a decent knife that fits in your pocket. But no, in all seriousness, this knife, he said, was designed for people that don't want to carry a huge five and a half to seven and a half inch bladed folding knife. Um, but you want something super effective for self-defense. And Lynn Thompson will tell you also he is apparently into knife fighting and training for knife fighting. I'm not. But according to him, stabbing is not what you want to do in a knife fight. To stab, you got to get into somebody and you expose yourself. Slashing is what you want to do. It's faster. It allows you to parry and block and move better. Um, you want to, and you don't want to try and kill people. Obviously you're better off just slashing their forearm, opening the muscle up, slashing their wrist, cutting the tendons above the knee. Um, you know, maybe you get a good slash on the shoulder across the pecs, something that's going to destroy someone's ability to continue to fight, but hopefully not kill them. And that's what this design for, for deep cuts. I still don't know why they didn't make it in serrated. Could you imagine this thing if it was fully serrated? <sighs> this thing would cut deep. And why do you always want to pick a serrated blade if you can on your self-defense knife? Because serrated blades cut three times deeper, especially through fabric, coats, leather, things like that. So anyway, they never made this in a serrated that I know of, but they did make this in um, two different, they made it in a satin finish and this black coating here that you see the DLC finish. So yeah, this is designed to be a self-defense knife. Um, hopefully it's a gateway drug for people to get into bigger knives. Um, if this, you're not going to find these, unfortunately, on the open market anymore, only on the secondary market, you're probably going to have a really hard time getting one. So my suggestion is get something like this for starters. They make this serrated, by the way, in this size. This is a four inch blade. It's like 3.89 inches, almost a four inch blade. Uh, it gives you a really good grip. I mean, you got your, I, mean, I have, again, my hands are, are bigger than XL gloves, smaller than double XL. They're somewhere in between. And this knife really, it's a little tight, but it fits real well on my hand. This would be a great gateway drug for you to start carrying something a little bigger than your sissy ass three inch blade that you carry. Get yourself a Talwar or something of this size in general. Uh, I don't know, maybe a, a Recon 1 from Cold Steel. Um, you know, maybe a, 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 a Spider Co. Police model, model number four, lightweight, has a four and a quarter inch blade, four and a third inch blade, something like that. And uh, these, these are not heavy, they're small. They're gonna fit just fine in your little, in your cute little skinny jean pockets. And, you know, you're actually going to have something with some reach. Even this, you could grab back here. Now I go from four inches to what? Another two inches to six inch reach. Yeah, think about that. Something to think about. Think about it. Anyway, that rain is complete now too. So this is the Colossus. If you can get one, would I recommend it? What is, let's think of some competitors. Some competitive options to the Colossus. There is none. There just isn't. 
Nobody makes a Colossus. There's a couple blades, big leaf shaped blades out there, but no, not big. Most of them are small. Uh, most of them don't have a handle of this coolness or size. Uh, really, there is no competitor for the Colossus. It is what it is. It's, 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 it's in a league of its own. So if you get a chance to get one, I paid $192. That is taxes, shipping, everything on an eBay auction. And I had to snipe it like in the last 30 seconds to make sure that I won this auction. These are going for more likely 250 to 300 a piece. Are they worth that? <sighs> uh, I mean, I collect cold steel knives. So for me, if I could get it for up to, you know, shipped and everything for up to 200, I was going to do it. You may differ. Uh, I think if it's, you can get it for 200, get it. Uh, it's a really awesome knife. It would really make a great EDC knife too. I mean, you could cut steaks and fruit and sandwiches and packages and ropes and everything with this knife. It would, it would do it all. And it would do it all at less than seven ounces. And, you know, looking friggin' good doing it. So, yeah. My recommendation is if you can get a Colossus, if you can afford it, if it's something you think is for you, just do it. Um, otherwise, you know, enjoy the knife porn. Mm. All right. So anyway, uh, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Please hit the like button because YouTube is going to deep six my me and the algorithm because I'm showing weapons and there's apparently the people who run the algorithm and, and YouTube are terrified of pocket knives and it's frustrating. Please, you know, help me out with the algorithm. Leave me, leave a comment, man. If you have a Colossus, leave a comment. Uh, if you know where to find Colossus, if you know a place where they, somebody has them in stock for sale at some store or something like that, put it in the comments for everybody else, man. Share the wealth, spread the good news. So hit thumbs up. If you don't like my video and you think it sucks, hit the thumbs down. Just do something. You know, tell me how much I suck in the comments. If you don't like my videos, tell me how great the video is. Tell me what I should do to improve the videos. Say something. Tell me what you had for dinner last night. I don't care. Anyway, I really do. I appreciate you guys watching. Look forward to many, 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 many more uh, Cold Steel Knife reviews and other brands too. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.